I think another part of it is that guns he thought were easier to, to like shoot action scenes with guns than to choreograph a whole bunch of like sword fighting. Spoiler! No, 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 no. He thought choreographing guns. Look at it. Look at this. Look at this. No. Okay, there are so many scenes I where people this fucking movie. <laughs> there, like there, the, the best one is the Oceana guy who's yeah. like just throw, like, throwing uh, bullets. Uh, throwing bullets. Another one of my favorites is like the first time you see like an actual like one of the gunfights with the main people yeah. come out. The main chick's like throwing her guns throwing all over. Her guns. <laughs> That, what are you doing? That's not- Good Kata, Kyle! <laughs> Haven't you ever seen Equilibrium? Haven't you ever played Devil May Cry, Kyle? Oh my god. He's <laughs> doing Gun Kata. It's- But it looks so stupid, because he's just like- do we? Hello and welcome back to Good Bad or Bad Bad Show. We watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Chilgo. Sitting across the table, the other host, Mr. Kyle Hinton. It's the 70th episode. It's not Ryan's babe, but it is coming. We're organizing things for that, but it's coming. Don't worry. Uh, in the meantime... We I don't remember to torture ourselves. <laughs> I don't further. remember where I found this movie. Uh, I stumbled across it. Maybe a recommendation on somewhere, Facebook or something. I don't recall, but it's on Amazon Prime, and it's called Ember Days. The leaves turn from green to gold. The warmth gives way to the frost. When I saw when, when I saw like the first like skim through it real quickly just to see how yeah. insane it was, the only thing I could think of was that underground techno goth techno thing. Yeah, where they're all under yeah. the uh, uh, yeah. uh, overpass. It, it felt yeah. exactly like that. Well, some of them have the exact hair that the people <laughs> in that clip oh. have. We must never forget the poem of war. Or the fragile balance which holds this world in place. It's like if there's nothing but dreadlocks and like spiked leather kilts in this movie. Yeah, yeah, uh, like cyber cyberpunk dreads, uh, cheap Renfair armor, uh, and and plastic guns. It's. I loved this movie. I mean, it's real bad. It's real, real bad. bad. <laughs> but I kind of fucking loved it. I am not going anywhere. Uh, so this, let me, I'm just going to read the, uh, this is the, on Amazon, the uh, synopsis of the film that like before you watch it. The fallen angel Azazel has come to earth at the behest of the winter fairy queen and formed an alliance with the Greek god Hermes. Together they seek to resurrect Azazel's demigod children, the Nephilim, whose existence would destroy the world. So this is a bit of a clashing of uh, pantheons here we got going on. We have the Greek pantheon, uh, there are titans. We used to be gods. Do you remember? Kronos, Oceanus, even that bitch Rhea before Zeus was born. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also we have like uh, fairy folk, fey folk, uh, and like the winter and summer queens, and they're like fairy type people. And then we have uh, the eight fallen angels, uh, like so from because he says like Yahweh, like you were the Ma Yahweh was your master. So we have like sort of the, the traditional like Abrahamic pantheon. Yeah, Yahweh was your master, Azazel, not mine. And I gather myself and the Olympians were lucky in that regard. We were able to cast down our oppressors. We put the titans to the sword, and what few remain now live in hiding. 
all kind of smashed together <laughs> in a beautiful, <laughs> absolutely just, beautiful train wreck. Yes, it's, I kind of love it. Uh, so this film is directed by Sean Michael Argo. Uh, or How Argo. many other things has he directed? Uh, a few. A oh, few. No. None I, of them. I, I couldn't find. <laughs> no, no, a few. They all look real like this, <laughs> from what I could see. Uh, I don't. I think this is the only one on like a streaming service. I don't know if you can get the other ones. Uh, also, if you didn't know, the main character, uh, Brand slash uh, Shim Haya. I'm Shimihaza the Gregory. You cannot deny me that which I have already taken. Uh, is the director. That's my Sean Michael Argo. Um, so. Uh, uh, Captain Dreads himself, uh, lead singer of Corn <laughs> himself. I'm like, gonna what, put what, what, a freak on a leash every okay. time he's on. Why? What? Why? Why? Why is that? Th- where you're just a guy in dreadlocks with like with a sweet goatee, a goatee, and you got like a black kilt that has like studs on it and stuff like that. I don't know. It, it, it's, it, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, it's a it's a choice. It is a choice, <laughs> uh, and that guy fucking made it. Um, uh, this movie was written. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, uh, some pagans went to a ren fair while tripping on a bunch of shrooms and then wrote a movie script, and that's this movie. And then they just got everybody who was at the Ren Fair to be in the movie in their costumes because every costume is is completely random. Yes. And just whatever like that. It seems like whatever that person that is like their Ren Fair outfit that they put together, they just wore. And then also a mixture. There's like all the like cyberpunk like there's like steampunk people with like hats, like weird hats. Yes. yes. And, and the it's, first it's, half of the movie, I was like. Okay, I don't know what setting this is taking place in. Like, they have a whole bunch of modern Earth amenities. Earth 2013. Yeah, well, they have a whole bunch of, like, modern amenities, and they have, like, you know, like... Guns. Guns and stuff yeah. like that. It, and you're like, what What time frame is this? And then, it's like, eventually, it's just like, that's a car. Yeah. That, that's a car. Well, here's what it's... It's modern time. I think what he's going for with this is, like, a modern day... Basically, I think it was a combination of things. One, I think he wanted to do, like, a... Uh, what if what if it's uh, all the gods we're battling in modern day? What if it's Clash of the Titans, but now or whatever? You know that kind of thing. I, th- I think he wa- I think he watched that and he wanted to mix it with uh, Legion. Why me? Because your child is the only hope humanity has of surviving. Yeah. Yeah, or, or mix it with that uh, with Boondock Saints or something like that's what this fucking movie is. Oh god! But uh, I think another part of it is that guns he thought were easier to, to like shoot action scenes with guns than to choreograph a whole bunch of like sword fighting. Spoiler! No, 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 no! He thought choreographing guns. Look at it! Look at this! Look at this! No. Okay, there are so many scenes oh, where people this fucking movie. <laughs> the, like the, the, the best one is the Oceana guy who's yeah. like just throw, like, throwing throwing uh, bullets. Uh, throwing bullets. Another one of my favorites people. is like the first time you see like an actual like one of the gunfights with the main people yeah. come out. The main chick's like throwing her guns throwing all over. Her guns. <laughs> What are you doing? That's not Gun Kata, Kyle! <laughs> Haven't you ever seen Equilibrium? Haven't you ever played Devil May Cry, Kyle? Oh my god. He's <laughs> doing Gun Kata. It's. But it looks so stupid because he's just like. Doing. 
and they're all like very clearly plastic airsoft guns. Yes. Like they're very obviously all like plastic airsoft guns. Uh, Hermes, who's one of the characters, uses dual Mausers. <laughs> yes. I fucking, it's amazing. It's so good. Uh, so let's. Let's get into it. Uh, it's uh, Cthulhu Blues Presents, and I was like, you have my attention, movie. <laughs> um, we start with a Lord of the Rings voiceover. It is unclear whether summer will remain, or if winter rises, and the old gods are lost in their dreaming. A uh, woman, uh, who is our main character, uh, Hecate, Hec- 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 Hecate, Hecate, they pronounce her name different Whatever, every we time. Us. I am Hecate of the Crossroads. I can feel Hecate's eye upon me. She has scried me out. I never thought she could pierce my defenses quite so profoundly. Uh, Shake. I'm gonna go with the Shakespeare pronunciation, which I looked up, which is Hecate. It's how Shakespeare pronounced it. And the old gods are lost in their dreaming. The ember days are upon us. So the old gods are lost in their dreaming or something. Uh, it's very interesting because she's wearing like a deep plunging uh, tank top while carrying a sword on her back and a gun in the other hand. <laughs> I was like, what is this? Uh, and she says her opening, her last opening line, Festival, it's the ember days are upon us. Festivals are held, songs are sung, blood is shed. Festivals are held, songs are sung, blood is shed. <laughs> the dialogue in this fucking movie is so amazing because it's all this stilted, like, I love I love how every week we are managing to find people that make Stephen Grew look more and more competent. No, false. I disagree. <laughs> I think this is what Stephen Grew wishes his movies were. I'm not even fucking. I have that note in my notes that this is what Stephen Grew wishes his movie was. Because here's the thing about this movie: it's fucking garbage. It's bad on so many levels. Um, but there's like. It's it, for how terrible it is. It's sometimes, sometimes interestingly shot in the sense of like things are lit like dramatically at least. Whereas like Stephen Grew's stuff is all just flat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like wide shots. Somebody walks into frame, a thing happens. This one, at least somebody behind the camera like knew like let's move the camera sometimes and like use shadows and like. You know, uh, not just shoot everything. It's like a wide lockdown still. You know what I mean? I'll give you that. That, That's what I'm saying. And and so, but, but on top of that, the thing that blows my mind, it's like, how do you have somebody? And again, it's not that it's like mind blowing or great. How do you have somebody behind the camera who at least vaguely understands how to point a camera at somebody? And then nobody on that set ever said, hey, maybe we should get like a boom mic. And yet only the Fae and the Fallen can see. <laughs> no, no. We are using the microphone in the camera. In the camera only. Uh, but which we'll, I'll get to in the credits. I'll get to a note that I... Wait, was there, a, was, there, was there an actual sound recorders for this? There's two boom operators listed in the fucking credits. And I was like, liar. You're a fucking liar. There was zero boom. There, Every, every scene, every every scene is is somebody across the room talking, and you can barely hear them. Look how proud the summer lady closes. But all you can hear is the camera operator. <laughs> Akate, my sister. What were you looking for? My secrets. It's our way, I suppose. Bam. <laughs> the you want to know how you get better sound than that? Just, just clamp a boom mic to a C stand. There anywhere, you go. That's it. Anywhere, anywhere. I, you literally just. We've done that on films. Yeah, I've done. I've done. It. I've worked on. I've done, fucking one of the movies I shot. I didn't have a sound guy one day. It was literally just me with a camera. So I put the boom mic on, and I had my camera like 50 feet from the actors, or I don't know, like back away. I set my boom mic on a, on, a, on a little like tripod, and I stuck it out of the frame underneath, like shooting up the actors, got way better well, audio let that be than- known. <laughs> Let that be known in the industry. If you're a boom opera, I'm kidding, you're, you're, you're actually valuable in some cases, but 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 you could be replaced by a C-stand. Yeah. Even, even better, worst part about being a boom opera, all the work you're doing is pretty much just for, real. Yeah, it's, it's just for ADR later. <laughs> yeah. 
also, as I'm watching this movie the whole time, I'm like, I can smell this movie. I can yes, smell. Yes. It's so bad. It's so bad. Every single time I was, every single time. Well, and just, and everybody, you're like, wow, there is so much pot was smoked on the set of this fucking movie. And so much, uh, so much fucking incense was burned on set. I'm not, I'm not even making just, gross uh, assumptions. I'm making gross assumptions about the kind of people who would write a movie where Greek gods do battle with, with the, uh, with the Abrahamic pantheon and the fairy folk in the woods and everybody's dressed up in Renfair armor. I know those people. Those people smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so, I, 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 you know, you know what I want. What? I, I want an image of you with just photoshopped at a Renfair, or unless you have a- you I know. have a photo of me at a Renfair in a pirate costume if you want that. So I go barely, to Renfair, Kyle. Counts. I need you to take your beard down a notch into a goatee. I need you to like just thin little... it out some because you can actually grow beard. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's fucking goatee. My favorite thing when the girl was kissing him at the end, I kept no. I kept expecting her to just start sucking on his goatee, and I was gonna throw up in my mouth and kill myself. And I was like, oh. I, I guarantee you, after she was done with this, she was like. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and also, so at, there's this one guy who walks into this shot wearing a fucking flame leather vest. And it's the stupid... It's, just, it's like it's that kid from your high school who wore the button-down flaming t-shirt, yes. except it's like the leather vest version of that. That guy, oh, and they're walking around with guns. It's my favorite. So we gotta get into the actual plot of this movie or we're never gonna finish. Some lady murders a bunch of people and gets a scroll and then screams. I don't know what happens there. Then we get into the main important, the important part of the story is we're introduced to Hermes in his in his uh, yes. living room, <laughs> <laughs> talking to a snake, <laughs> which is Azazel, who, who who is saying things with S's yeah. a lot. Yeah. I was there when first the sun rose and fell, before the world knew the touch of summer's heat or the kiss of winter's bitter cold. I love it. They do the snake voice. So this, it, the snake is a, it has the spirit of Azazel trapped in it, uh, who was the first fallen angel. Uh, he used to, you know, when the angels fell, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, and now uh, they want to put him in a body so that he can execute his plan. So, <laughs> so they find a dude who is jacked. <laughs> So uh, Hermes and Satan, or it's not Satan, it's Azazel, are teaming up to take down uh, the Titans. Because if they destroy, kill the Titans, that will somehow release uh, the, or resurrect the other fallen, the Nephilim, who were the other fallen angels. Uh, and that will, they want to do that for a reason. <laughs> This movie, okay, it's really hard to follow. Um, I knew, yeah. I, I was able to follow the general idea of what happened, but sort of the nuance of the uh, the details of the plot were a little lost on me. You don't say. <laughs> but. I still feel it crawling inside me. I didn't even see it coming. The fallen one has had countless thousands of years to perfect its craft. Partially because they all talk in this weird, stilted, like poetic, dramatic mm -hmm. language where everything, you know. Where, and also, also, um, apparently, I, I guess this, a lot of these people are like gods and stuff like that or divine. Touch. Most of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I guess it's what happens when you become a god is you just become monotone. Resistance would have slowed its hold, but in time its hand would be upon you. It will remain until the balance is restored. No, no, I got to talk about the makeup in this movie. Oh, the fucking this is the, where we get the gold face insane. for the first time. Okay. And onwards we walk down the bitter paths to the Winter Queen. It's everybody has a shit ton of eyeliner. The 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 the, the, the Greek pantheon has gold like whenever they want to like reveal their godliness, I guess they have gold faces with like winged eyeliner mm -hmm. and like weird Tattoos. Things on their neck and stuff. Uh, they look just fantastic. Even if you survive this day, the fairy courts will hunt you down. If not, the Olympians surely will. He talks to Snake, and they're going to team up, and they're going to go, oh. And then we go into the middle of uh, the woods? What happens? 
I bear the mark of the queen, and my business is my own. Stand aside. Take a look, my darling. Hermes gets confronted by some goths for some reason. Oh, on the train tracks. Oh, because he's going to find the winter queen, I guess. It, I don't, doesn't matter. They're, they're, no, they were in the middle of a rave, like down the street where the overpass was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and so they, they, they meet the Winter Queen and they talk to her and basically she's going to put the snakes, the spirit of Azazel, which is in a snake currently, into a person. So they put him in this giant beast of a man. And they put him in this giant beast of a man who's just jacked out of his mind. Uh, and he is Azazel. Who, who, who may be sponsored by Nike. Yeah. That's the other thing about this movie. The fucking costumes are such a hodgepodge of, like, leather armor, a Nike t-shirt. Like, and then some of the people are, like, full-on decked. This is the reason I thought it was, like, come with whatever costume you have is yeah. because some people are completely decked yeah. out. And other people like, are literally... Like, like they just came out, like, they just came out the set of Vikings. Yeah, yeah. And then other people legitimately are there in, like, a, a fucking Under Armour or a Nike, like, sports athletic sleeveless shirt. And I'm like, wait, what is... What are we doing here, movie? Um... And I, I'm sure they were like, it's fine because it's modern times mixed with like God stuff. So whatever we have, just hodgepodge it all together. And it's like, eh, it doesn't quite work. It just uh, looks ridiculous. I mean, they look, they, they, they start to look homeless. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, some of them straight up look homeless. Well, I mean, specifically Kronos does because he is like a meth addict or something <laughs> yes. in this movie, which I thought was an interesting choice to make Kronos the Titan of Time a fucking meth addict, but sure. <laughs> Oh, and also I noticed that Hermes is wearing Angry Joe's jacket, which I thought was weird. So she starts talking to the snake at one point, or right before she puts him in, and, and this is where the really the audio issues start becoming super unnoticeable because she's talking to a snake yes. and you literally can't hear anything yeah, she's like, saying. Yeah, that's like, pretty much right where I texted you and said, holy crap, this, this sound mixing is fucked. <laughs> And then uh, the other thing that drove me crazy, it's like, look, if you're going to get like, if you're going to have everybody bring their fucking Ren Fair armor, at least like throw some dirt on it so it doesn't look like brand new. Like they just fucking bought it. All these yes. like ancient fairies and gods and stuff, their leather armor is like shiny and brand new. I'm like, just rub some dirt on it. Like, yeah. Just so it looks used. Jesus. Um, maybe they had to return. Maybe they were borrowing it from like a Ren Fair vendor and they had to give it back to him so they couldn't get it dirty. And then she says something in his ear that I couldn't hear because there are wind chimes <laughs> that are really loud. Take a look, my sake. And then he comes back and he's Azazel. Boom, she put the snake into him. Uh, oh, and then this is where we're introduced to Brand and uh, Hecate, which is how I'm going to pronounce it. They pronounce it Hecate, Hecate, Hecate. True. I am Hecate of the Crossroads. And he's a fawn. Brand is a fawn, apparently, which I think is what the reason for that shitty goatee. <laughs> Brand, my fawn. But he's supposed to be a fawn. I mean, they do nothing to make him look like a fawn other than like his goatee. Like he doesn't have goat legs or anything. No, he's just a no. dude. He has, he, has, <laughs> he has a kilt. He has incredibly exposed legs. Yeah. With a kilt. And they're human legs. I'm like, all right, great. But he's a fawn. And they're like, they're like, uh, they're like playing drums. And there's one dude in a leather vest who I need. I wanted him and uh, the, 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 flute the flute playing flute. elf to make a band because there's this dude in a leather vest playing a drum and he's like my favorite. He just looks super mad the whole time. <laughs> he just doesn't want to be there. Yeah. Uh, we go into the 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 Summer Queen's lair and this is like where the the first kind of fight, quote unquote, happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Yeah, and then, and so we see all this the whole band of characters. When, when, when was this movie made? Twenty. Well, it came out in 2013, is what it says on Amazon. I don't or IMDb. I don't know when it so was, was filmed. Yeah. Or, so, so somebody saw the first season of Game of Thrones and they were like, "This is like the fight at the uh, the veil, right? The sky, the sky door." 
where they're they're fighting for uh, Tyrion's life. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah, sure. Well, I mean, that's, well, no, that, like that, that's yeah, what yeah, it exactly yeah, yeah. Feels champions like. thing. Yeah, it does feel a bit like that. It is my right to demand challenge. So it is. So like the the idea here too is so that part of it is like this battle between the seasons like there's summer and winter and there's like the summer coalition of fairies and they're like all chilling and then like the fucking goth kids show up to the fucking drama school kid the the fucking theater kids and they have this fucking throwdown they all like standing off facing off with each other. Look how proud the summer lady clothes. Fucking conformist. <laughs> yeah. It really, what's so funny is my Katie when we were watching this last night. It was so exactly that moment, like, we're all, because all the winter people come in and they're all like the cyber goth, like, <laughs> steampunk people. And then all the all the summer people are like the Ren Fair people. Yes. And then one guy has a fucking rapier and it's like, why? Half the people have guns, half of them have swords. The one fucking main sword they keep pulling around at one point I thought was a Hema sword. I found out later that it wasn't. But uh, it was like, is that a fucking... They, like, this definitely was at a Ren Faire, because that's a fucking hemosword, or at least it looked like it was. Shout out to Scala Gladiatoria and Scala Grim. That's sure, my, why, why Hema, not? It's for my Hema people out there. Summer night, I call you to arms. Treachery is afoot. And this is the whole, this whole thing, they're in this giant, uh, like, pavilion. Uh, and I love they have this staircase coming down in the background, and it's just a wooden staircase, and they're like, we gotta dress this setup. Uh, let's put some cloth over the end of the stairs. <laughs> um, uh, and then, uh, so they, they, they fight, and there's a big fight, uh, the guy kills the guy, um, and it's, it's terrible, like, he's just like, snaps his Aww. neck, yeah. Uh, and then, and then they're like arguing still, and this summer queen stands up, and Hermes pulls out a gun, and shoots her in the fucking chest. Please, Majesty, cease your questions and die with some dignity. And then everybody pulls their guns out, and it goes into slow mo. Okay, this is the part that blew my mind. That's so great. Okay, so she, the the newly whatever queen, because yeah. she. Yeah. the other one the winter queen she's the po winter queen. points points at a guy with a violin yeah it says can you play us a tune yeah please shall i play my queen he's playing a violin where every single horsehair on this thing's bow has been broken <laughs> He's literally just rubbing a wooden <laughs> stick against the violin chords is that not how you play a violin <laughs> Are you sure? Now, I don't know how to play a violin, but I know how the fucking thing works. Yeah, I know the, the general principle. Uh, yeah, it's pretty great. And then when this happens, it all goes into slow-mo. They all pull out guns four feet from each other and just start shooting. And she, like, dances through them all as they're, like, unloaded. It's, it's kind of great. She's now the new queen. She sits on the throne, blah, 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 blah. And then we move on from there. Beautiful. Uh, we cut into the tent with, uh, with, with Heck, Hecket and Brand, who are like sleeping in a fucking yurt. <laughs> You know this was either shot like at a Ren Fair, and they're like, we'll, we'll just leave off the land while we're here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or or this is just this guy's regular home. Yeah, this is where like, he no, lives. This guy, he looks like a homeless person, and if he's living in a tent like this, he's probably a homeless person. I wouldn't be surprised if that tent was his home. Or that or the living room we're about to see in a few minutes, because oh. that one living room that we see is fucking amazing. Brand, son of the forest, let me. He's in. They're in the tent. Like him and uh, Brandon and Hecate are in the tent, and then he like he like passes out and starts like seizing or whatever, and then he gets because he becomes possessed by uh, Shimaz 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 Shima Haz, I'm Shimaz the Gregory. Shima Hazaya. I'm gonna call him Shim from now on because I 
not going to remember that name. And Shem Haziah, Shem wants Hecate to help him stop Hermes and Azazel from completing their plan, basically. And he's like, I had to possess this person so that I could come to Earth and He's help. also dead and will be rotting throughout this movie. He's not dead. He's in... He's definitely rotting, though. Is he? Oh, yeah. What do you mean? Like, like the oh, the oh, the oh, the care. Oh, I see what you're saying. Maybe, sure he's dead. but he's supposed to. Well, I think he could have come back though. He only can't come back because I. At least I think he can't come back because he gets killed in the spirit realm at the end of the right. You know, so, anyways, he goes like to a spirit realm, well, realm like the summer wood or I don't know what they call it. With the with the queen lady who got shot, and they're like hanging out there for the whole movie. Mm-hmm. And I feel like okay, they must be in like the spirit realm together. Well, I guess that well, maybe that'll matter. Yeah. An ancient axe has stolen your body. Shimaha's fallen one has taken your flesh. It doesn't matter. We get to the part where they're killing titans. <laughs> we get to the part where they're killing titans. Um, uh, Hermes and, and uh, Azazel show up to kill uh, Hyperion. I always wondered when one of you Olympians would be back to finish what you started. No, oh, Hermes. For a minute there, I thought Zeus had found his thunderbolt. Uh, who's just a fat guy drunk in a in a warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part of this whole thing is he he gets whenever he like they're getting ready to fight, he gets up out of the chair and his back is completely covered oh, in sweat. Yeah, butt sweat <laughs> titan. That's what I call him. Oh, more ambitious than the others give you credit for. Transgression is divinity, isn't that what you used to say? I hold to it still. His whole back half of his body is soaked in his soap. I was like, holy shit. Like, like holy shit. you know, like he had to have been in there for like hours yeah, trying to get the scene down. He must have been down. laying in that chair in like 90 degree heat for like literally hours because it's he stands up and his entire, I was like, that dude is going to suffer from heat stroke if they don't fucking get him some water and shade very soon. Ambitious than the others give you credit for. Transgression is divinity. Is that what you used to say? I hold to it still. Uh, so there's a fight. Uh, they have a sweet, like, slow mo firefight. <laughs> it's just. This is where the. The quality was already bad. Yeah. And then it just, the gunfights are <laughs> so amazing in this movie. They're all just the terribly choreographed. They're all like in slow mo. People don't know how to shoot guns because they're all like they're all like they're all like hippie like wood folk who just like smoke weed and live in the woods. They don't know how to shoot guns. So they literally just throw bullets out of their guns and stuff. It's it's fucking amazing. Yeah, that, that, that's no that, that's exactly the way you just did that. That's yeah. exactly uh, Hermes. Yeah, Hermes. Just straight up. <laughs> Oh, and then every now and then they like switch it to like a negative, like they they do like a color oh. switch negative <laughs> on the frame. Yeah, when it, when they need to imply something was damaged. Yeah, they do. They're like, oh, you know those cool Mortal Kombat X-ray shots? Can we do that? And they're like. No, no. Uh, what if we just put in one frame of, of negative to kind of be reminiscent of that? Perfect. <laughs> it's, the, it's the same thing. You know the crew behind the whole thing was like, there, there's somebody who knew, like you said, the, the shots were almost competent. Sometimes they were, yeah. Like yeah. The camera guy was like kind of knew what he was yeah. doing. The whole time he yeah. was like, what are we doing? Oh, no. Oh, no. Can you take my name off this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, there's, there, there's enough competent, and especially the lighting at times is like actually really cool. Like, I, relatively speaking, like some of the lighting is like really cool and dramatic, and there's like shadows. You know what I mean? Like, it looks interesting. Like, it's not just like a Stephen Grew movie with like one light or no lights, just like pff, flat and boring. Like, it's, there's in, some like interesting lighting and shit going on. So, somebody there kind of knew what they were doing, but most of them had no idea what they were doing. <laughs> Also, Hecate, or Hecate, for some reason, tr- changes into the world's ugliest, like, velour brown tracksuit. She's wearing, like, a crushed velvet yes. tracksuit. It looked like she walked out of the fucking 70s. Uh, what it's the It's so hell? amazing. I don't know why they decided that was her outfit. I'm sure, I I don't know, because, uh, yeah, it was wrong millennium, but whatever. Hello. 
And they show up in that living room, and that fucking living room with the ugly old couches, and it's like, it's clearly like the director's living room, because it has this like ugly ass wall hanging that they didn't take yeah. down. And this is where they explain uh, the story, which doesn't matter. Shimazaya is also an angel, doesn't want the fallen angels to succeed, doesn't want Azazel to succeed at bringing back the other angels, because he doesn't want the legend of this the other angels ruined. It, it, it did that thing that all that bad movies tend to do, which is, stop for a second. And explain. Let us explain yeah. the plot They to just you. sit in a, an ugly living room and explain the plot for few minutes. God in heaven declared the Nephilim all be put to death. Azazel refused and was cast out. The first angel to fall. One thing is clear. It is not for love of this world that he seeks to keep the Nephilim down, but to save his precious legend. Now here, here's the question, Brian, and this is going to make your head hurt. Is this more or less competent than Billy Owens? More. No, this is more competent. <laughs> This is more competent. This is absolutely more competent. One, it's it's way more interesting to look at. Yeah, it is. If for no other reason than all the weird people in the movie, like all the crazy dressed up people are like at least interesting to look at. Two, it's, I don't know if it's shot more competently, but it at least is interesting to look at how it's shot at times. Like there's some, like I said, there's some visually interesting things going on. Billy Owens never. Um, two, they didn't do any really terrible green screening. Anyone and anything that comes in my way. Stand. They actually are on locations for mm. all of this stuff. Like they're in which, like which is always an abandoned factory. Yeah, it's always an sort. old yeah, it's always some abandoned building in Canada or whatever, probably. But still, at least they're fucking somewhere. Like they're you know, there's not there's not green screening stuff. Um and, and yeah, it, no, it is and, and I could follow this story. Like, again, the, the details, the minutiae of it are a little confusing, but I knew what was going on. Like, I didn't remember all the characters' names all the time, but I knew what was going on. That guy absorbed in energy bad to bring guy back and Hermes, bad guy. Yeah. Boom. They fight go. good guys. The good guys stop bad guys from bringing back more bad guys. <laughs> like, that's the plot. Like, it's very fucking easy to follow. <laughs> Yeah, it, it race against the clock, get to them before they get all the Titans. Cool. I got it. I'm on board. It makes sense. Um, uh, let's just break down the Titans real quick. Yeah, so all there's right, so, four of them, I think, yeah. that we see in this. Uh, so we got Hyper Hyperion. Hyperion. Um, yeah, he's a smith, maybe, or something, I think, is the idea. But he's um, just like a mechanic, basically. Yeah, he's a drunk mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's the woman who I can't... Uh, Rhea, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. Rhea, who's the second one they go to. She and she, like a, she looks, she's a she potter looks, she in looks, this. I know, she looks like a, bike, the, a biker reject. Yeah, from, she has uh, like a bandana. From Checkmate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. She does look like she could walk into Checkmate and be right in, right, fit right in with the crew. Hello, boy. I felt the stirring in the heavens. I knew it could only be the messenger making his way toward me. You got a lot explaining to do. Um, and she's like doing pottery in the world's messiest garage. Like, I don't know why they like, okay, sure. Uh, and then there's uh, the uh, the Oceana. Oce Oceana's guy who looks like he's really trying to compete for the uh, inconceivable. Oh, his fucking voice. That, guy, that motherfucker's voice in this movie. There are Olympians outside fighting each other. Who was it? that has betrayed me and who is it that stands in my defense that whole scene is 80 yard and he it's is amazing. going for something i don't know what the fuck <laughs> he's going for but it's like thank you for telling me your plan and i'm like what the fuck are you doing man curious indeed i thank you fallen one now I know which of my children I must slay. And then there's Kronos, who is a <laughs> meth addict. There was only one Titan left. He withdrew from the world after exile to Earth. If not a god, he wanted to be less than nothing. He's a junkie now. Whoever the actor is a giant of a, a man. A beast of a man, yeah. He's a meth addict, and my favorite thing about that is that for some reason Hecate brings him drugs. I'm like... The Olympians fight one another. Fairy courts are at war. Why are you bringing drugs to a titan? <laughs> like, you're enabling this, like, fucking ancient being to just, like, sit in a fucking uh, meth den and just be high all? All right, sh sure. What? Okay. Bring me my pipe. It is over there on the table. Uh, I, my favorite thing too, or one, I love that for no reason, uh, the gods like Hermes and stuff go back and forth between gold face and no gold face for no real mm -hmm. reason that I can suss out. It's just like when they wanted to do the makeup versus when they didn't yeah. want to do well, the no, what I think it. What I think it was is you could, all the stuff that they had the makeup on for was stuff they shot out early on. Yeah, and they're and like, fuck they were just, this. This, is, this sucks. <laughs> all right, let's just. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're like, yeah, we're gonna go to this gold makeup. It's gonna be great. And they this shout is ta- out this is taking like three hours every day. We can't afford yeah. to keep <laughs> make up this. for three hours for this shit. Are you kidding me? They started seeing the dailies and they're like, it's really not worth it, guys. It's really fucking not worth it. You sought to protect your son out of love. There is no shame in that. But look at the consequences. So, uh, Rhea doesn't put up, they go to kill Rhea, and she puts up, like, no fight. She's just like, fine, do what you gotta do, and he picks her up! Like, like fucking Bane breaking Batman <laughs> over her. Like just, straight up, this guy is playing as as yeah, a could like he could old be, lady. I think he could be in the WWE yeah, with those moves. Yeah, it's <laughs> fucking huge. He picks her up and just like off camera though we hear and like and, like somebody all in the side of the room broke some celery. It's like what it fucking sounds like. It's a, the sound effects are also terrible in this movie. Uh, oh, and then uh, the witch. So the witch queen said, "Well, we need help to stop." Uh, or the Winter Queen says we need help to stop um, Hecate and uh, Shim from from stopping us. So that she summons the Wild Hunt. I summon the Wild Hunt, over which there is no victory. And I was like, quick, somebody call Geralt. <laughs> um, but apparently, the Wild Hunt is like a folklore thing. Like it's not just from uh, <laughs> the Witcher. I was unaware. <laughs> but um, it was like an old folklore thing. I thought you said Geralt, and I was like, the fuck's Geralt? Geralt. Geralt of Rivia. Um, it's the T. Yeah. Geralt. Oh. And and they're the ones that uh, have like, a cell. a lot of them have like the, the teeth. They have like fangs. For some reason we have people with fangs and like crazy makeup and hair. Um, they're, they're great. Uh, so they're too late to save Rhea. They show up at Rhea's. They're like, shit, she's dead too. Uh, and, and, and Hecate angrily slams a stick off camera. <laughs> It's just like she throws like a broom and it's like clatter uh, <laughs> and I was like great um, overreaction yeah but it but it, it's overreaction but like it doesn't the sound effect doesn't like <laughs> capture what they're going for she's like ah! quack <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, Uh, so then two new characters show up and decide they want oh sorry this is they leave there and this is the gun kata scene you were talking about where she's spinning God. spinning <laughs> her arms around shooting everywhere it's I lost it I literally laughed out loud at that <laughs> We, we randomly cut to two new characters who decide they want to go fight the Wild Hunt, and it's that girl with the face paint yeah, makeup. Like, what, the f- what was that? I don't know, man. And they just sit there and talk to each other. And my favorite thing about this scene, this is what I was talking about, where it's like clearly everybody just come with whatever costume you have. <laughs> because she has like all these piercings and this crazy braided hair and this face makeup and like all these like 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 yeah. furs and stuff. And then the guy <laughs> is just in a t-shirt in a t-shirt and jean shorts. <laughs> There is blood to be spilled. The Winter Queen has usurped our Summer Lady. I was like, what the fuck is this? What is this? What? This doesn't make sense at all. And they're like, they're like, oh my god. I love it. I was like, you couldn't like do anything with that guy. You couldn't like <laughs> throw a little face paint on him or like anything. I was like, I feel like that was her boyfriend and he's like, I- I'll be in your movie, but I'm not, I'm not changing. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fucking putting any stupid clothes on or putting any makeup on. I will wear this black t-shirt and these black jean shorts that I have on. All right, well, let's keep them in a dark room. Maybe nobody will see them. <laughs> yeah. Except for at the end when he's running around in the woods and you can just see him like just clearly wearing t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> I love it so much. We should stand against the wild hunt in defense of our summer lady. This is a tale worth living. A tale worth dying for. There's another firefight here. Yeah, this is the this is the uh, throwing bullets firefight. <laughs> Cuz they're going to find Oceanus, but they're having yeah, they they run into um Hermes and Hecate run into each other before they get to him. Or they run into each other while Azazel is going to talk to him. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But mm. they start the firefight. And this is where we get... I I was not expecting this. We get a slow-mo Matrix bullet dodge. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. <laughs> oh my them. god. Two of them. They're like, Boo, and the world's just cartooniest bullet. <laughs> Also, you'd expect, I don't know, what, what's Hermes known for? His speed, right? Yeah. Isn't he fast? That might be a He's time. A messenger. This, this might be a time. I could be wrong. If you're going to waste money on special effects, instead of doing bullet dodging, why not just make Hermes fast? Yeah. Oh, I think that's the idea with the bullet dodging, but also Hecate can do it. And yeah. maybe she also has that skill because they're no. siblings. I don't fucking know. But yeah, because I think that's what they're going for with him dodging bullets. But oh, it looks so fucking good. Yeah, this is the point. I was like, man, the gunfights in this movie are legitimately worth Just the price the, of the admission. The Oceanus one where he's like, ah, ah, cha, 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 cha. When we were trying to figure out if we watched this movie, we that was the part we stumbled across. When we were, we were, like, yes. we're like, yep. Yes, we're doing this. <laughs> Throwing those bullets out of that gun. Uh, so there's the great conversation, though, with Oceanus and, and Azazel, Azazel, where they're sitting by the lake, and Oceanus has the fucking helmet from, <laughs> from Troy or whatever sitting on his on his thing. And it's all this whole scene is 80 yard, and it's all 80 yard terribly. I assume it was really windy that day, but it's 80 yard, but they didn't even come close to matching the lips up. How did you find me, Father? I was shown the way. None can stand in the path of the righteous. There are Olympians outside fighting each other. This is the only scene in the whole movie where for some reason the dialogue is it's it it's 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 like watching a dubbed martial art like Asian martial arts film. Like it's 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 like watching Kung Fu Hustle. It's insanity. Just as he has led me to Rhea and Hyperion before her. Just as he has led me to Rhea and Hyperion before her. Um, and also, I love he pulls out a gun on Azazel from like a foot away and sh unloads at him and Azazel does a fucking uh, Wonder Woman yes. blocks the fucking bullets. <laughs> oh, and then another big gunfight uh, happens. Every kind of nonsense. Hermes, Mausers, and then uh, he shoots He shoots him. He somehow gets up on a tower. Yeah, and, and it Azazel, is the, uh, the thing from uh, Die Hard yeah, on the table. Yeah, yeah, he shoots him up through the bottom of the floor right through his neck kills him uh and then sucks and his then, juices and then like climbs up high five. yeah high fives him <laughs> to suck his juices out so then they go to meet they go to visit chronos but finally hecate and or hecate or whatever and shim get to a, a, a one before they kill him um and they get to chronos and she brings him some meth and then they they're Here's trying the drugs. <laughs> yeah they're trying to convince them uh to join the fight uh, and he's like, what do I don't care? Uh, what do I care about this pit, the struggles of humans, blah, 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 whatever. What care do I have of your struggles? And then eventually they convince him and... Uh, would, would you do it for meth? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, so then uh, I'll simultaneously, we've, every now and then we've been cutting back to Brand and the Summer Queen, like chilling in the woods. And then the whole time I assumed it was the spirit realm. But here's the thing that's really weird to me. And I still think it probably was. Is that the people we saw earlier, the the girl and Mister uh, T-shirt, <laughs> Captain T-shirt, um, said that they said they want to go help and battle the Wild Hunt. I assumed they were going to come help Hermes and them, or not Hermes, um, Hecate and Shim. They actually go and find Brand and the Queen in. So they yeah, go into the spirit realm. This is kind of with guns. There are guns in the spirit realm. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> They're spirit guns. Spirit guns. I was so confused. Oh, by this whole part, I was like, oh, okay. So I guess they're, all right, sure, fine. Brand, take my spirit and protect it to your last breath. Go, oh, my son. It is raining in this city. I love at one point Kronos when they show up, first show up, he, he goes, sit with me on my throne of refuse. <laughs> Come, Hakate. Sit with me in my kingdom of refuse. <laughs> Cause he's in like a fucking, just uh, uh, some like uh, a trailer full of just trash and shit. Mm -hmm. Like a, it's like, like, it's like, like a meth den. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Shim's like, okay, well maybe if I fight Azazel in single combat, we can win. And then Kronos, Kronos uh, if Kronos helps us, we can do a last stand against them. 
um, and defeat them or something. And I'm like, oh, okay, sure. I am not going anywhere. I am Kronos, dark father of the Olympians. And I will stand here and fight. Whatever. And then we cut back to the spirit realm and face paint Lady gets a glorious death. Uh, where she shoots her machine gun again, or her assault right, whatever her gun, uh, very clearly having no idea how a gun, because she's like, but she's screaming, and then uh, she gets she gets shot. She dies. She gets shot in the head by the Winter Queen. Again, I thought they were in the spirit realm, but I guess they can travel back and forth. Doesn't matter. This is the final battle. The whole Ren Fair's here. They're all ready to throw down. Uh, there's lots of screaming, and then they charge at each other. And I love, too, Kronos is just screaming the whole time, and he starts walking towards them, and apparently he's bulletproof. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so our guy, so that's Shim, what the armor does. yeah, yeah. But I was like, shoot him in the head. I don't know. <laughs> like he doesn't have armor anywhere else. Uh, Shim is hiding behind him, like using him as a moving barricade, shooting people. It's it's pretty great. And then I love this. There's a, so a random moment where Shim gets shot. And blood goes everywhere and he falls on the ground and the person who shot him runs up, <laughs> runs up like, and does oh, nothing. Nothing. And then runs away and gets shot. And I was like, wait, what? It's it's what it what it reminds me of is in uh, it was a Dark Knight Rises where they're doing the fight and then the one guy off to the side who's like just randomly yeah. gets hit and like falls over. <laughs> Azazel uh, and Kronos come face to face and they set down their guns and they walk off camera to go fight. Spoiler, we will never see that fight. <laughs> we don't get to watch these two beasts do battle with each other. Azazel just dies off screen. Um, or no, Kronos dies off screen. I don't. Yeah, Kronos dies off screen. Doesn't fucking matter. Kronos too is defeated. There's some great music for the firefight in the spirit realm woods. There's like this banging, like fucking rave techno music. It's pretty amazing. And the dude in the t-shirt and shorts just running around in the woods, and he gets killed. Uh, he gets snuck up on by a, a lady with fangs, uh, and he gets mowed down. There's just, there's just like w one of many, if like nameless people who just like, or maybe they do have. I don't give a shit. I'll, no, they, they don't have halfway names. through. But like, they're ch he's chasing the dude. Is it what's his name? Brand Brian or Brand. Brand. He's being chased like through this like wooded, the snow covered wooded area. Yeah, and I'm like. This is this is awkward because you're you're running very slowly. Oh, because oh, because he's barefoot and it's snow on the ground. And, and, and like this is immediately yeah. like not They're not like, it's, like it's thrilling. The, yes, <laughs> it is the most. It is the least stakes in a in a foot chase. They're literally just like. <laughs> Man, so we, then we get the fight. We get the fight between Hermes and Hecate. And my favorite thing about this, they have a firefight. There's lots of stuff. Then eventually they get into a fist fight at the end. And Hermes is choking her to death. And then she fucking goes full meme on him. <laughs> fucking teleports behind him <laughs> she teleports out of his hands behind him and shoots him in the head she goes e do you know the nothing personnel kid <laughs> meme no oh, i no. guess i guess not oh it's 
it's a fucking anime meme um, where like an anime character teleports behind a, a, the character and then says nothing personnel kid like he says nothing personal but it's spelled personnel kid and then he kills him Brian's a weeaboo uh, nothing personal kid And I love too. There's another fight, and in this fight scene, their their solution for not being able to have people that actually know how to like fight mm -hmm. uh, and can do choreographed fight is to just anytime there's an impact, cut, <laughs> cut out like yes, four. Yes. Okay, so this is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. So the part where he's like getting, he's, this is the part where Brad's getting his face beaten, yeah. in, it is like the most, it's the most unbelievably slow punches yeah. I've ever seen because it's like I don't want to hurt you, but yeah. Uh. So. So their solution uh, uh, is every time uh, he's about to hit him, they cut like four frames. So it's like, uh, like it like just jumps. Which there is some, there's some truth to that in editing and how you edit fight scenes where you cut early and you know, but normally you do it with multiple angles to like kind of cut and make impact seem faster and that sort of thing. But they just like, we'll just, we only have one camera and one shot and we only did this once. So we'll just cut four <laughs> frames out to make it look faster, I guess. And then in that scene when he's beating Bran to death, all of a sudden we get camera blood splatter for no reason and, and really terrible CG camera blood splatter. Uh, it's fucking amazing. Uh, and then uh, and then Hecate is talking to Bran, or talking to Shim in the <laughs> warehouse and he's like, spoilers by the way, BTW, you're pregnant. You are with child by Bran. So she's fucking pregnant. She's uh, like, okay. what? Okay. And then this whole, this fucking scene. He goes, okay, so Azazel is gone to heaven to release or bring back the, or gone to somewhere, I guess heaven, to bring back the Nephilim. Mm -hmm. I have to, my only chance is to go fight him there. So I'm going to cut myself with this stupid sword that has a curvy blade. And then somehow that will release me from this body. I can teleport to heaven or wherever. He goes up there. Steal yourself a little And then uh, we don't get to watch him battle Azazel. Oh, I thought this was just set up for like a sequel. Or no, like they that. fight up there. What happens is you can hear it. So we're, we we stay with her and like freaking out and falling all over the place. But we hear the voiceover sounds of the fight in heaven or whatever. Our children bathed the world in blood and for it they had to be destroyed. It was you who filled their hearts with violence their minds with the knowledge of war. You are the leader, and you betrayed us. And then uh, Shim wins. And then he comes crashing back to Earth as a meteor. That's what fucking happens, man. That's what fucking happens. I was like, what? What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what happens. We don't even watch the final battle. It just all happens off camera. Comes crashing back to Earth. Azazel's dead, I assume. And then they go and stumble into the woods and Brand is going to die. Shim is going to die. So he dies, but he's like, I can bring back Brand because I got a little bit of his spirit still. And then Brand comes back. And they're like, yay, and they kiss, but then Bran's like, well, oh, but I'm died. I'm dying, I'm dead. The lady is calling me home. And then Bran dies, and I was like, wait, what? There's a gong sound and he vanishes in a puff of sparkles. What? <laughs> they will hunt me, but I will not break. This child will be the first of the new legends, and the world will change forever. Uh, two things. One, I want to party with these people. <laughs> these people, I bet, throw a fucking killer party. Exalting the world with drink, music, dancing, and the telling of tales. Two, and this may be controversial, 
I think that this story could be done well. I think that the bones of this story and what they're trying to do in this movie could be executed in a way that isn't terrible. I think. I'm going to reserve. No, it's not. No, it can't be done. I don't know. I actually thought the story could have worked if done uh, competently. Like, I thought the idea... Because, again, the the bare bones of the plot kind of makes sense. And uh, structurally, I thought it was, like, okay-ish. But, uh, boy, is everything terrible about it uh, other than, like, maybe the premise. But even that, I don't know. Kyle... What do you think of this one? <laughs> it's entertaining enough to where I'll give it a good bad. I was going to get it, yes. I'm giving it a good bad. I, it's you, a li- you knew I did not like it as much I as know, you did. I know you didn't. That's why I was interested to see. Uh, it, it's a slow burn. It definitely... the, the If the, I can just cut out the first 20 minutes. Yeah, honestly, the first great. 20 minutes are really boring. Um, if, but, I can just have, if I just have bullets being yeah, thrown and yeah. like gun Yeah, and gun kata and just like the crazy, uh, the fight scenes and, and just the over the top performances and the bad audio like it, it's got so much going for it it is a little boring in the beginning but I, I think once it gets going it, it picks up a little bit uh i yeah good bad man i i had a lot i had a blast with this film i want to be friends with everybody who's in this movie which odds are when i go to the Renfair next year i'll run into some of them so i'm okay <laughs> um, um nope kyle's gonna pass on that one Uh, if you want, you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash GBRBB. Uh, we need to record a podcast episode yes, we really do. soon. Well, we're not going to be able to do it tonight, but we'll do it very soon. Um, so look out for that, patrons. Oh, I have a podcast called This Film is Lit, where I talk about movies that are based on books. Our entire run of Harry Potter is finished. If you were interested in hearing about our fe- me and my co-host Katie's feelings on Harry Potter, it's all. The whole series is done. You can check that out. We're also on the new things. The most recent episode was Mary Poppins. The coming episode is Bird Box. Ooh, that's topical. <laughs> <laughs> I, I called it the happening, like younger, less it's, impressive, or more it's impressive brother. The happening whatever. meets a uh, quiet place with eyes, I think is the plot. I don't know anything about it, but that's what it seems like. I'm sure that joke's been made, but that's what it looked like to me. Um, so, yeah, well, Bird Box is our next one. Uh, and then we're doing Minority Report after that, I think, so because that's based on a short story. So, anyways, check out that podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever else you download podcasts. This film's lit. Uh, also, uh, that's it. Uh,